Kathy Christ with the Arkansas Neuroscience Institute at CHI St. Vincent Infirmary treats people for aneurysms and he is here this morning talking about some risk factors, some symptoms, how prevalent it is. Dr. Christ, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having Tell me, me how often does something like this really happen? Well, aneurysms, brain aneurysms are very common. Okay. There's about five to six million uh, people walking around with aneurysms, believe it or not, in the United States at any one time. Really? Yeah. That is a lot of people. That's a lot of people. Wow. Fortunately, not all of them bleed. It's about eight to ten and a hundred thousand bleed, which means thirty thousand in the United States. We get our share in Arkansas, about three to four hundred okay. each year who bleed from aneurysms. Kind of talk about if so, what is an aneurysm exactly? How would you describe it to someone the who's best, never The heard best one? way to describe it is imagine if you have a tear in the outer tube of a tire okay. and the inner tube bulges out and that's how it happens from an artery. It's the weak spot that blisters out from an artery okay. in the brain and it weakens and with the pounding pressure it can bleed and if it bleeds it's very, it can be fatal. Okay, let's talk about risk factors. What exactly uh, should people watch for, be aware of in terms yeah. of what you guys yeah. classify as risk factors? Yeah. Well, the risk factors for having an aneurysm, number one is smoking. Among all the bad things smoking does, aneurysm is one of them. Okay. It weakens the arteries like a wear and tear process and causes it to bulge out. Um, the other risk factors are uh, uh, including high blood pressure. If you don't control your blood pressure, if you don't take your medications on a regular basis, it can predispose you. Okay. There are some familial aneurysms. They occur in families. That doesn't mean that if someone in your family has an aneurysm, you're going to be scared you're going to have one. Mm -hmm. Kind of like allergies. If, if your father has allergies, you may have them. Okay. If you smoke and get exposed to the risk factors. And there are a lo another list of them which are less common, mm -hmm. like having infections, certain infections infections or some of us are born with uh, cysts on their kidneys and those are patients who will be recognized early in life and they're usually being followed. But smoking is number one risk as well as the risk of bleeding from an aneurysm as well. What about uh, male female? Is it more prevalent? In there is, there is, you know, I don't want to kind of be biased about it. Uh -huh. It's always said that this is a female disease. It's not. Okay. There is, it's more common in females. It's about for every three females, two males have aneurysms. Really? Three to two, the ratio. Okay. Yeah. Um, looking at symptoms, what, I mean, you mentioned how, what, five million people, yeah. you know, and what yeah. exactly should they be feeling or looking for if they're experiencing an aneurysm? Yeah, the, 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 the main symptom is uh, the worst headache of your life. Okay. If you're somebody who doesn't have headaches and you have a thunderclap headache, which kind of makes you sick or make you pass out, that is a most likely cause of an aneurysm, okay. caused by an aneurysm. The other thing is uh, those headaches can sometimes be tricky. They can be bad. They can come with like, you feel a flush of, of pain that comes into your neck oh, with okay. neck stiffness. Uh, you sh typically patients are sick and nause nauseous and they're, they're throwing up. Uh, what is th uh, the important message is if it's a headache, which is unusual, because a lot of patients have migraines, have mm -hmm. headaches, so how can you tell? Yeah. If it's a headache that's different from your usual headaches, talk to a doctor. Okay. If it's a headache going to stop you from going to work, it is important. It's, if it's anything going to affect your life, it is important. And as, as, as early as the last two weeks, I had a, a lady who never missed work. And one day she had a headache and missed work. And that was an important sign. Unfortunately, yeah. this was not recognized. The third day after her headache, she had the bigger hemorrhage and passed. Wow. See, that's scary. And that's something that we yeah. want to avoid. Let's talk about treatment options for aneurysms. Yeah. The aneurysms are best treated if they don't bleed and before they bleed okay. to prevent her from bleeding. If they get diagnosed, even though some aneurysms may not need to be treated, but the, the majority are better off treated. Okay. Uh, once they bleed, it's a different disease because mm -hmm. half of those who bleed are not, either not going to make it or they're going to have major deficits. Okay. The treatments nowadays are safe. Uh, there are different ways of treating them. Depends on the complexity of the aneurysms. 
Uh, we treat them either with surgery. Nowadays, it's advanced a lot to where you make a very small window in the skull and you sneak in from under the brain okay. and you can take care of them. And some of them are also treated with putting a catheter through your groin that goes up into the aneurysm and you feed the little coils in it. Sometimes we use stents also just like the stents of the heart uh -huh. and sometimes more complex one you may have to take the whole artery out and you do a bypass just like you do a bypass wow. for the heart right. so it depends on the complexity but aneurysms are safe to be treated nowadays and are they better off treated than not if they're diagnosed all right now you can always call the arkansas neuroscience institute 501-552-6412 doc thanks so much for coming right. in today good thank to you, see doc. you as always okay. thank you valuable information here on good morning arkansas we come back after the short